What's up guys, it's Javier and today I'm going to take you through an upper body workout that focuses a lot on um, some of my current weaknesses in the upper body. So first I'm starting out with a series of wrist stretches uh, because for whatever reason after I had competed in Olympic weightlifting for a few years, my wrists got very stiff afterwards. I know sometimes I had to wrap my wrists just if it was a little sore and they ended up getting very stiff probably could have done more stretching during the time as well but now I'm trying to loosen up the wrist again um, so I can work on you know like my handstand type movements and uh, planche type movements as well so these are, are some good uh, fingertip push-ups that I actually learned from the Gymnastic Bodies um, series of programs, which um, I definitely recommend to people as well. I definitely say you should check those out if you're interested in getting serious about your body weight training. I'm kind of just getting into the more um, intermediate sort of body weight moves now, but um, I'm nowhere near some of the guys out there so still got a lot to work on so I just went through this circuit a couple times and um, I'm not showing you every every rep but um, just kind of take as much time as you need to when you're doing this part of the workout so you feel warmed up sometimes half my workout is pretty much warm-up and then I only do a little lifting or more higher intensity movements so I always take it by feel Here's um, a weighted stretch um, that I learned actually when I went out to Denver to train in one of the Gymnastic Bodies affiliates. Um, and I found this one to be really useful, especially post um, pec surgery rehab as far as regaining my range of motion. So I'm actually probably more flexible now than I was before I tore the pec, uh, just because I, I've paid more attention to the flexibility. With this one though, just make sure make sure that you take it, if they be very conservative with the weights. Okay, there's no need to rush it. And if you try and do too much weight, you will almost certainly injure yourself. So, you know, stretching, it just takes time, it takes practice. Okay, and here I'm messing around with the handstands a little bit. I am haven't really been working on them that consistently, but I'm lately trying to, um, trying to really get them solid. And since this video was filmed, I had received some a little better tips on entering into the handstand. So hopefully in my next video, I can show you guys some progress when it comes to that. And here I'm just doing a little extra pike stretch, trying to loosen up the hamstrings. Sometimes I like to um, walk my hands towards my feet as I um, go through the stretch, just to kind of test myself and have a guideline. So my first exercise pairing, I ended up pairing up a, uh, a dumbbell preacher curl and um, a front lever variation. And I know a lot of people say that the preacher curl is like a totally non-functional exercise and all that stuff. But um, I, I personally think it's a legitimate variation. The difference between the preacher curl and just a regular seated curl or something like that is that your forearm is going to be parallel to the ground at a different elbow angle than if you are just seated, okay? If the upper arm is by your side. So that's why in order for these to really be effective, you have to go all the way down or else you're kind of defeating the purpose of the exercise. That bottom 
maybe third of the range of motion is what's going to be harder in a preacher curl versus if you're doing some just a regular standing curl or an incline curl something like that where you get the most resistance is closer to the bottom on the preacher curl versus right in the middle on um, a regular standing curl and yeah so these are, this is the front lever exercise I don't really have I don't really know the proper name for this exercise I'm sure there already is one but I just call them laybacks um, so if anybody knows the proper name feel free to say so in the comments below these I'm trying to keep my body from the shoulders to feet in a straight line and trying to hold my hold that line as tight as possible okay so once I felt like my hips were starting to pike I ended up just uh, stopping the set there here's just the preacher curls from another angle you want to make sure you're not rocking back that shoulder as you do the curl I do it a little bit there I guess but I try and keep it as strict as possible okay and if you really need to you can use your other hand to spot um, the working arm sometimes I do forced reps um, using that fashion just using my other arm as a spotter um, which I really like actually and I almost prefer that to doing like an easy bar curl for example with a training partner as a spot because you can really make it much more um, precise although a good training partner will should be should learn to do force reps um, effectively but it just takes practice so this is uh, my second set here I'm not going to show you guys all the sets, but just to give you another look at it. When I come vertical, I want to have my chin above the bar, just like I would have just finished a pull up. All right, so next I decided to show, throw in a um, little shoulder superset here with a dumbbell shoulder press. Um, going into a uh, lateral race. So when you're on the shoulder press, a lot of the times I like to not use the back support just to keep myself more strict and to build that core strength a little better. Uh, but I, I will use the back support every now and then and especially if it's already very fatigued from another workout or something. But in general, I like to go without it. And so this is, uh, I guess, a typical sort of post-exhaust superset where do the compound movement first and the isolation movement second. You can do also the reverse, a pre-exhaust superset where you do the lateral raise first and um, the shoulder press second. I find that that is good for the times that either you don't have access to as heavy a weights as you usually would so you fatigue out the delt first and then go to shoulder presses um, or if you're just feeling kind of tired you don't think you can really handle as much weight as you normally would or the joints are a little sore maybe the elbows are sore and you want to still get a good workout but without having to go as heavy fatigue out the shoulders doing the lateral raise first okay that way by the time you get to the shoulder press you're not going to be able to use as much weight anyways so it's a little less stress on the joints but you are still get a good workout in I try to get always get my hands at least to shoulder height sometimes if I'm getting tired or bend my elbows a little more just to get the reps in um, so yeah lateral raises is one exercise I don't mind a little bit of cheating with and so to finish up this workout I did um, a couple exercises for hamstrings so these are 
um, the reverse hypers. I don't usually use a ton of weight with this exercise. I mo mostly just focus on getting a good contraction in the glutes at, at the top of the movement. So that's why I'm not necessarily bringing my feet up that high. Okay, I could go higher and if I wanted to make it more of a, um, a lower back exercise as well. Okay, And these are just a couple sets of leg curls here. I like to go with the toes pointed down um, because it helps to take the calf out of the movement and you definitely feel it a little more in the hamstrings. If it's your first time using that variation, it's not uncommon to get a little bit of cramping though, but um, you definitely get used to it to go away. This is just my next set of the reverse hypers. It's also one of the good one of those good exercises to use if you want to work out the the glutes, hamstrings, you know, all the, that whole posterior chain hard, but you don't feel like you want to put that much load on the back as far as doing like a deadlift or, you know, good mornings, Romanian deadlift, any of that stuff. That's a good variation if you feel like your back is fatigued or tight and you don't want to stress it too much. And this is just my last set here on the leg curls. A lot of times I like to pair up that hip extension movement with the knee flexion movement. Alright, and that's it for the workout.